Hello everyone, welcome to FSCJ. My name is Heaven Kleckler. I am a student recruiter here in the Recruitment and Admissions Department at FSCJ. I am so glad that you could join us today. We'll be going over some information about completing the application process from start to finish, everything that you'll need, every step that you'll have to take in order to apply with us here at FSCJ. So your journey starts here. The first thing that you need to do in order to get started, no matter where you want to go on this journey, what path you want to take is to apply. So you'll go to apply.fscj.edu to get started. And one thing that we want you to know is that you can do this. You are totally capable of it and you are absolutely not alone at all. There are people here to help you. You can always reach out to us during any point in this process and let us know what help you need in order to keep going. So this is the beginning of the application. You will select whichever button here applies to you. If you're a brand new student, you'll select that you're a new student. If you are a returning student coming back after some time spent away from FSCJ, you'll select that you're a returning student and so on. Most of you will probably be new students if you're here with us today. So you'll wanna make sure to click the right button there. And then you will declare what your academic goals are. So if you want to earn college credit towards a degree, that's what you'll select. If you want to take college credit classes for personal enrichment, but you don't intend to earn a degree, that's what you'll select. If you want to take vocational classes or even non-credit classes, whatever your plan is, whatever your goal is, that is what you will select here. Most of us are probably going to select that you want to earn college credit towards a degree certificate or transfer. So for the purposes of today, that's the path that we're gonna take in this application, but it will look very similar no matter which path here is the one for you. So once you select which academic goal is yours, you will then have to declare what your college plans are. So this is where you will select the actual program that you want to apply for specifically. So this is where you can either search through the bachelor's programs, the associate programs, or the technical certificates. And if you're not quite sure which one is the one for you, then you can just search the academic plan from the interest area that it falls under. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. You'll come to a page that asks about your college plans more specifically. So it will ask when you plan to enroll, so the term that you plan on starting, Fall term begins in August, spring term begins in January, and summer term begins in May. So please keep that in mind when you are filling out this application. Now you will select if you plan to enroll full-time or part-time, and that is completely up to you. There is really no harm one way or another. It's just about what your plans are. So if you're someone who will be in school full-time, if that's going to be your main responsibility, then that's what you'll select. But if you're someone who is going to be working full-time and only doing school part-time, that's what you'll select too. But one thing I want you to know is that you are not tied to whatever you put there, full-time or part-time. You will determine that once you enroll in your classes, if you decide you wanna take more than part-time, you can absolutely do that. If you decide you only want to take part-time classes, but you took you selected full-time year, you can do that as well. So keep that in mind. But everything else on this page, you are tied to. So you'll want to be sure that when you're going into this, you know what you want to apply for, because this is where you'll select your area of study. So as an example, if the program that you want is under the information technology field, if that is the area of study for the program, that is what you'll select as your area of study. And then it will populate all of the programs that fall under the information technology area of study and you'll be able to select which exact program you want to apply for. So that's good to keep in mind because you'll want to make sure that you apply for the right one. If you do not apply for the right program here, you will have to go through the process of trying to get that changed. And that can be kind of difficult. So it's good to just go ahead and get it right from the beginning. So be sure that you do your research and you make sure you know what you want to apply for when you apply. And then of course they want to know who you are. We want to know who you are so we can get started with you. So if you're brand new to FSCJ, you'll create a new application account. You will use your email address. You'll create your own password and it will send you an email verification. Once you verify your email, you will be brought to this page here. And this is where it'll tell you, you have this application in progress and you can click to continue it and it'll bring you right where you left off. After all of that, it will be a lot of personal information. So it'll ask all about you, your name, your date of birth, your social, 
everything that they need to know about you and your academic history. You will fill all of that in and then it will bring you to your proof of Florida residency. If you would like to secure the lower Florida tuition rate, you must complete your proof of Florida residency. So I'm going to show you exactly what that means and how to do that within the application as well. So just so you know, there is a way to do residency after you've completed your application. So if you're not able to complete it when you're sitting down to do your application, that's OK. You can move forward without doing it. Just make sure that you don't forget to go back and do it within your student portal at another date and time. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get it done so that it is done for you and you don't even have to worry about it. So within the application, it'll bring you to this page where it'll tell you all about what it means to be applying for Florida residency. So you'll select if you are an in-state student or an out-of-state student. If you're an in-state student, that means that you meet all of the qualifications listed above and you qualify for that in-state tuition rate. If you are an out-of-state student, you are declaring that you are not a Florida resident and you do not qualify for that in-state tuition. So be sure that you select the, the right one here. If you are an in-state student, be sure to say that you are an in-state student. And then it'll break down all of the information that is necessary in order to support your claim for in-state tuition. So it'll tell you the difference between a dependent student and an independent student. And just briefly, a dependent student is a student that is under 24 years old and is eligible to be claimed as a dependent under the federal income tax code by the claimant. The claimant is typically the parent, um, one of your parents, if you do fall under this category. Your parent must have maintained legal Florida residency for at least 12 months, and they must be able to provide proof of that. If you are an independent student, you are someone who has maintained legal residence in Florida for the past 12 months and you are over you are 24 years old or older. This is someone who provides their own support and they can also meet the qualifications listed on the screen. So if you are under 24 years old, you can qualify for this by being married or by being a veteran or by um, having a legal dependent. So keep that in mind. There are ways around that. And if you need help with that, if you need help with figuring out which one of those applies to you, you can always reach out to us for that help. So you will select whichever one here does apply to you. And like I said, if you have to skip it at this time and come back later, you can do that by selecting the very last one that says I do not wish to complete my residency at this time and wish to proceed with my application. So once you put in all of your residency information, it will bring you to almost the very end. There will be a $25 application fee, so you'll need to pay the $25 application fee at some point in time before you start your classes. You can absolutely pay it right here right now and get it over with by selecting pay application fee. They will take a credit card online and you will be able to use that and get it done. The application fee is a one time only application fee per the career that you selected. So if you applied for a college credit program, you will never have to pay a $25 application fee for a college credit program at FSCJ again, which is really great if you're planning on maybe attending for an associate's degree and then a bachelor's degree. So keep that in mind. It is a one time only $25 fee, but it must be paid before you register for classes. All right. And beyond that, we do have a FSCJ scholarship application that you can apply for after you've completed your application to FSCJ. You'll have access to the scholarship application. It does take some time in order to give you that access, but you will be able to apply sooner than later after completing that FSCJ application. So I'm just going to show you briefly what that looks like and what that means. So in order to qualify for the FSCJ scholarships, these are the eligibility requirements that you must meet. You must be enrolled in a degree seeking program, which basically means that the program that you're in must be financial aid eligible. They must accept financial aid. So when you're deciding which program you want to be in, that is a question that you'll want to ask and make sure that you have answered for you. You must be enrolled at least six credits per semester. Six credits does break down to be about two classes, so you must be at least part time. You cannot be under part time. You can be over part time, but you cannot be under part time in order to receive scholarship funding. You must maintain a 2.0 GPA, and this is a rule that applies to any kind of financial aid, not just scholarships. So you will want to make sure that you are maintaining that 2.0 GPA. You will have to complete a general scholarship essay. 
The prompt will be given to you within the application and you'll just have to respond to it. You will need to provide at least one letter of recommendation. I do encourage you to have more than one just in case, but you will need at least one letter of recommendation and this can be from anyone in your life, whether it be an employer, an old teacher, someone that you work with, anybody like that who can kind of vouch for you and give a good word for you. So please keep that in mind. And then for most of the scholarships, you must have submitted a FAFSA. There are some that don't require it, but more of them do. So you'll want to make sure that you complete the FAFSA application as well. And I will talk about that later on in this presentation. So to go ahead and complete that scholarship application, once you apply to FSCJ and have access, you'll go to www.fscj.edu slash scholarships to get started. The great thing about the scholarship application at FSCJ is that is it is limited to only our students. So you're not going up against other students and in the country for the scholarship funding. So it's a great opportunity to get more of that money in order to help you pay for your education. When you start the scholarship application, this is the first thing that you'll see and it'll give you all of this great information. And I want you guys to see this and make note of it because this breaks down all of the deadlines for application. You can't just go in and apply whenever you want. You have to meet the priority deadline or at least the final deadline. So as you can see here, the fall award priority date was May 1st. So we're already past that, but the final deadline is not until August 1st. So you do still have time to go ahead and get your application in for fall funding. And then of course, semesters after that are broken down there as well. So please keep this in mind. Please have all of those things ready that I mentioned. And I highly encourage you to fill out the scholarship application because you never know what you might qualify for. And then last but certainly not least, how to complete your free application for federal student aid, otherwise known as the FAFSA. So the FAFSA is the source of every federal student aid available to you. So how do you apply for federal financial aid? You'll need all of the documents listed on the screen. So you will need to create a federal student aid ID, also known as an FSA ID. The FSA ID serves as both your login for the FAFSA and it also serves as your digital signature because this is an application that you will be completing online. They will ask you to type in your FSA ID to serve as your signature. One thing to know about the FSA ID is that if you are a dependent student and if your parents are helping you complete the FAFSA, one of your parents will also need to create an FSA ID. You cannot do it all on your own. They must have their own in order to provide their own digital signature. So keep that in mind. You will need your social security number for you and parent if applicable. You will need your driver's license number if you have one. If you do not have a driver's license number, it is not required, but if you have one, we do need it. You'll need your alien registration number if that applies to you. And then you will need your federal tax return for 2018 taxes for the 2020-2021 FAFSA. So the FAFSA always goes two years back. So since we are applying for the 2020 starting term, you will need 2018 taxes. It's prior prior year. So you will need your 2018 taxes for you and your parent if applicable. You will also need W-2 information for both you and your parent if that applies to you. Now on the FAFSA, there is this wonderful tool. It's called the IRS Data Retrieval Tool, which you can utilize where it will pull your tax information directly from the IRS. Now it doesn't work for everyone. Not everyone is eligible to use this. You can always try, but if it doesn't work for you, it's good to have that federal tax return on hand anyway. So please, please, please be sure to have those documents ready when you're filling out the FAFSA. You will also need any records of untaxed income. So things like child support, if you own a business, if you have any assets, they will want a full overview of your financial situation in order to determine what you qualify for. So here are some really great points about the FAFSA. So the FAFSA stands for a free application for federal student aid, as we said. And one thing I want to emphasize is the first word in that is free. It is a free application. You do not have to pay money in order to receive money. So be cautious about that. The FAFSA does open up annually on October 1st of every year for the following year. So we opened up the 2020 FAFSA on October 1st of 2019. So there is so much time 
to fill this out if you haven't already done so, but we do recommend to go ahead and get it done as soon as it op opens on October 1st. Like I said, you have to create that FSA ID, which you can do at fsaid.ed.gov. You will need one for yourself and your parent if you are a dependent student. And you'll wanna make sure that you include the FSCJ school code. FAFSA will not send your information to every school unless you give them the permission to do so and tell them to do so. So when you're filling out the FAFSA, you'll wanna make sure that you put our school code on there so that we do receive that information and so that we can help you get the funding that you need. So you'll put our school code, it is listed on the screen right there, um, but if you don't write it down and if you don't remember it, you can always just search it when you're within the FAFSA application. So the FAFSA can be completed online at studentaid.gov. Keep that in mind that it is a government website. If you are not on the .gov website, you are probably not in the right place and be very cautious about what information you put out there if you're not on the government website. But there is also a FAFSA app. It's called My Student Aid. You can download it and you can fill out the FAFSA right there at your fingertips. But one thing that the app doesn't have that online does have is that IRS data retrieval tool that I told you about. So just know that if you do it from the app, you will have to manually type in all of your tax information, but it is there to help you if you need it. 